live from the Young Residence. This is Derailed Trains of Thought. Hello, Tim. We're just kind of in a home. Yes. Hello. Hi there, Nick. I feel like we should keep it down a little bit. Yeah. Well, there's just the uh, lady of the house is home, I think, for now, but she looked like she's getting dinner ready for her husband. I mean, it's, I feel a little odd intruding here. It's, this is yeah, a very it's kind of a small, personal place. Yeah. It, it is. that They don't seem to have a whole lot of uh, fancy stuff. No. Which it, is fine, but I, mean, I can see they've decorated for Christmas a little bit. Yeah, and you can kind of see, yeah. There's they some must, ribbons on the wall. I think there's kind of a young a young couple. So, yeah. Yeah. Be yeah a young good. couple, eh? Oh, yeah. Ha, pun. Ha, ha. Pun times. Okay. Maybe that was intentional somehow. Might have been. But. Anyways, we'll just sneak in the corner while she's... No, she's wearing something on her head. Maybe it had, she looked like she's wrapping a Christmas present. It yeah. must be real close to that time. She's, yeah, she's getting prepared. Anyway, hello, folks. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We're back. We are back. A week, a week, a week, a month break. Yes, uh, exciting month for you, Tim. That's right. Yes, if you missed our announcement on Facebook, my son was indeed born at Yay! the end. Yay! In, at the end of October, shortly before the October episode came out, but after we had recorded it. But yes, my brand new son, he's now five weeks old as we record this episode, David Emmanuel Deal. He's doing great. He came out with a lot of hair. Uh, that's <laughs> one of the first thing everyone notices about him. Um, but it's been great. He's, he's actually a pretty good sleeper. So we're doing okay. You know, I mean, he still gets up every yeah, he's five weeks, two to four hours. So yeah, the eat, but he's overall, he's been a very, a very great baby. And we're, we're doing well. Mama is doing well. Janelle is doing fantastic. Fabulous. So yes, we're, uh, we're settling in for a merry December. Very good. And by the time this comes out, it'll be almost time for our recap of season two of Let's Finally Watch This. Yes, we've gone through all the the decades of film. The very last one came out the beginning of December, and the wrap up episode for season two will come out a little bit after Christmas, mm-hmm. around December 29th, I believe, last Friday of the year. So if you listen to all the other, if you haven't listened to season two yet, or not all of it, please do. Yes, absolutely. A lot of interesting movies there. Uh, Very unique, uh, a more unique variety, I think, than season one in some ways. More eclectic. Eclectic, maybe is the right word. Yeah, more so than I think even we had realized when we started off the season. (laughs) So it's been a lot of fun, though. So even if the movie that you uh, hear us talk about is not one for you, you might find the discussion interesting anyway. Yes. So that's one of the ideas of let's finally watch this. So, Tim, let's go and, and let's finally start this. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> here is Story School. So, it's our uh, December episode. So, we, we usually try to do something a little festive or holiday related. So we're going to talk about Christmas trees and stories. Oh, wow. <laughs> you changed it on me. Yeah, it's, a, it's an evergreen topic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't needle me like that. <laughs> I can't figure out why you could use conifer here. Okay, so <laughs> anyways, that's not our topic. Our topic is the restorative power of stories. It's one of those times of years where we kind of take a break Look towards things come, you know, it's right around the New Year's, like we're getting back to the beginning or restoring just how things were. It's a very hopeful season. And sometimes a little introspective. And stories are a great way to both ex- kind of experience hope anew and also think about <laughs> our place in the universe. Now, I suppose if we if were a social scientist or something like that, we, we would have hard data about how stories change mental health and stuff. But we're not going from that angle today. We're going from our normal shoot from hip philosophical viewpoint. Just going based purely on our own very, what's the word, subjective observations. Yes, there you go. (laughs) So Tim, there's lots of different ways. Let's start with, I guess one maybe people think about, which is that we were talking about before the podcast, kind of the chicken soup version of the stories. When you're feeling down, sometimes literally you're feeling sick, you have that go-to movie, go-to book that you crack open. You wrap yourself in covers, you get hot cocoa out and read... Or watch, or at play. Some people talk about like their their comfort gaming. Yep. One day in the life of Ivan Donosovich. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> Not that one. Don't read that one. No. I know our friend Aaron Brosman, who's a big anime guy, has talked about My Neighbor Totoro. Which would role. be great. I mean, I would put Loop on there for me. Uh, sure. Cagliostro. For, for Loop on probably gives you that sense of adventure. Of, yeah, I'd like, oh, life. Yes. My Neighbor Totoro has got some of that sense of wonder, that mm-hmm. your family connected togetherness. Some theme in the story that means a lot to you personally, or at least it tells it in a way that means a lot to and, you. And so, so usually it's a story, a movie, a video game that's familiar, not only in that you've seen it a number of times, but also it, it resonates in that very, like, it knows me. Yeah. Sort of way. Yeah. But it, and it seems to me like there's something nutritious about it. Even though we talk about comfort food as if something sometimes that's junk food. But see, chicken noodle soup is not junk food. That's right. Chicken noodle soup is not <laughs> junk food. It has something that helps your body recover. So I guess that's where we go into what are some various ingredients in a story that help us recover when, you know, the world can kind of beat us down, whether it is an yep. actual physical illness or other mental stuff. I think you mentioned one of them that. I think it's a very good one that we don't always think about is that that restoring that sense of wonder. I'm sure we've talked about it with uh, at some point about beauty. Tolkien talking about like the good escapism. Right, right. Where you get out of the the kind of the humdrum world or maybe the this is broken world uh-huh. and you enter a different world where th- the bad guys get punished and the good guys succeed and there's adventure and and love is everlasting and you know all these all those things that you wish was in the world right now, but isn't. Yeah. The the way the world, you know, the way it should be. But it, it, I mean, ultimately the world will be made right. But right now we live in the not yet. Yeah. So, and, but, so it's nice to have a story where the not yet gets yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where justice prevails and yeah, the right comes out strong. So l- l- do you have some, do you have one uh, that you would go to for that sort of thing? Um, well, speaking of Studio Ghibli, probably my go-to for that category might be Castle in the Sky. Mm-hmm. Castle in the Sky speaks to me both from like my kid perspective and my young adult perspective. Yeah. Like the kid of me loves the kids going on an adventure and, you know, outsmarting the adults and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. The young adult part of me really enjoys the kind of bittersweetness of the the mythology in there and that mm-hmm. the things falling away and kind of a, a rebirth and the me- the more fantasy aspects of it. It speaks to like the, the old kind of movies that kind of fascinated me and then like my college self. <laughs> yeah. I think, I don't always wonder, but that sort of thing that things work out well and resonate. I don't know what, this might not be a great example for wonder, but I was thinking about it because in one of my classes we're reading Christmas Carol. And that's just one of those perennial like it's, always good no matter how many different versions you watch yeah it's always good it's always worth watching it's always worth watching i think there's just some some sort of magical element about it captures that sense that like even the most despicable person can turn good you know there's a it captures that goodness of caring about other people yeah and that that christmas carol is a great example last year i went through i watched a couple because i knew that there were some that i had seen only parts of and never all the way through so i went through and watched a lot of the main ones really the ones that stuck in my mind were the Albert Finney musical from 1950s, 1960s, mm-hmm. even though that one had some quirky elements to it, but also some really neat cinematography. And sometimes the quirkiness really sticks in your head a little yeah. bit more than some of the more like straightforward. A lot of people talk about the Patrick Stewart one, which is a pretty faithful adaptation. It doesn't stick out to me quite as strongly when I was going through a bunch in a row. Yeah. But it's still, yeah, any version of A Christmas Carol something about that story and we've talked in depth about a christmas girl yes, yeah, back yeah. when we did talked about redemption but it is just a quintessential story that i think will reach you at almost any time and the, yeah it's just it's just a very interesting that captures that and just it just works for the last 180 plus years yeah <laughs> there's not very many stories that have that kind of cultural saturation yeah certainly more so than probably any other dickens story yeah yeah exactly I was going to switch topics, and we have another example. Sure, go ahead. So I'm going to flip it on its head. So sometimes stories are restorative because it reminds you of the great things or the good things. Mm-hmm. But I think sometimes, almost paradoxically, stories are restorative by touching those parts that hurt you, those parts that are maybe traumatic or you're suffering. Like sometimes it can be very encouraging to watch a story where that makes you sad about the things that are sad in the world. Mm-hmm. That. You know, like if you ha- if you have a certain loss, watching a story where someone else is suffering that, because then you're not alone, or someone it almost validates it in some ways. Yeah, and I've heard some fan fiction writers say that sometimes they would 
Like, why would you have your favorite fictional characters go through this trauma situation that they didn't have in the original show? And some people are like, but this is kind of a way that we help process our past traumas, that we see someone that a character that has been already been established in one way. And like, well, what if they experienced something similar and how would they go through it? I heard a quote the other time from some counselor saying that all counseling is grief. Um, I just thought that was an interesting phrase, but in some ways, stories stories that help you process that loss, that grief, that whatever you're going through, I think, can be helpful. It's sort of that whole, um, for instance, I guess, Toy Story 3, a lot of people, it just wrecked them, right? You watch Toy Story 3, and you're just very emotional at the end. I, I My sister, Haley, won't watch Pixar anymore. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. But I think for many people, though, they would resonate with the end, and would be sorrowful for them, but... It was also like, that's why they liked it. Yeah. Because it, it was a, it validated that this is a real thing that mm-hmm. was good and has changed. In some way, we've gone through a loss of being that, you know, of giving up your toys, your childhood, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, it's painful, but it's not bad. Yeah. And if, in some ways, it's more beautiful because it is bittersweet. And because it's true. Yeah. And you know, it's a good thing to move on, to grow up and... And that sort of thing, and yet realizing what you had, enjoying what you did have. So I, I think I think there's certain stories that are sad or resonate with something that uh, some sort of loss that are also restorative because it says that's a real thing. You feel it, I feel it, we all feel it. Mm-hmm. Let's go through it together. I guess Inside Out is like that too. Yes, and, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And a lot of good picks are like this. Yeah, I mean, the whole point of Inside Out is realizing that it is important to be able to feel sad. A sadness and other neg what we associate as negative feelings yeah. but like having that emotional understanding of what they are and how the, our emotions help us process stuff because riley when she was not experiencing the emotions correctly she was about to make a horrible mistake and yeah. running away from home basically because she had just been emotionally shut down and it's interesting we don't normally think about being emotionally shut down impacting our intellectual decisions mm-hmm. but it can and so in that sense, yeah, it, that's a story where it's less about, I mean, it is a feel-good movie in some ways, but it's a There's little There's at least deeper. a moment that's not. Yes, there are moments in it that are not. And it's, yeah, it's a different sort of restoring. It's like a, I guess this is this type of restoring that's reminding us something that we know, but we have forgotten. And I think as humans stuck in this, like we say, now and not yet, that the world's still broken, mm-hmm. I think we need to be free to say, Yes, it's broken. This part of my life, you know, that there are things that are not optimal. Yeah. And, and not just say, sometimes, at least in Americans, we want to just brush it over. We yeah. just say, it's okay. It's fine. It's just how things are. You don't cry. You just be brave. No, just, yeah. no, you need time to cry. Yeah. And I think, I think that processing that saying that is real can be re- very restorative. Now, for some people, it's just painful. Yeah. But I think, I think it can be restorative in, in many ways. Yeah. I think that makes complete sense. So I'm going to transition from the, again, from more pain to, good is that stories can also be they're like friends they're like i belong <laughs> like sure oh i'm not the only one that feels does thinks fill in the blank and that could be on something traumatic like we talked about yeah but it could be just i remember hearing someone saying um i just read it somewhere i assume it's true drax they really like drax because he acted like they did like they had they were somewhere on the spectrum from guardians of Guardian the galaxy. galaxy okay and then it's like oh that's my sort of guy interesting because it was someone who would also didn't always catch all the subtleties of language. Okay, sure. When I was getting clips for our Elf episode of mm-hmm. Let's Finally Watch This, if you've listened to us talk about Elf and Let's Finally Watch This, I was the one who hadn't seen it, by the way. And part of the, my problem with that film is I had a hard time empathizing or connecting with Buddy. Yeah. But I saw one YouTube commenter who pointed out on the, in the part where Buddy writes a letter to his family saying, I don't belong anywhere Mm -hmm. basically and that is a feeling that people can identify with i guess one people who are from one culture but live in another country there's that but even also people with certain mental Mm -hmm. handicaps or difficulties or something just you might have interests that no one else around you has you just feel like you're the weirdo yeah yeah i think that's a fairly common feeling like i don't belong anywhere and we're all looking for a sense of belonging. And so I, I can certainly empathize with that. Like, I know early college, I discovered Neon Genesis Evangelion, right? <laughs> uh-huh. And I, I deeply identify with Sinji. Like, yeah. I like I just felt like he felt like kind of 
out of place, and I I really got him. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, but I really got him. I don't mean like I was mentally disturbed like Sinji, okay? <laughs> but this idea that like my freshman year was kind of a lonely year because I was trying to figure out how to connect to new people and I was shy and all this other stuff. And and you weren't living on campus. I wasn't living on campus. Yeah. And so that sort of like just disconnection you had, like, like I get along with parents fine and whatever, but just there was things I'm like, okay, I get this guy. Other people hate his guts. <laughs> um, uh-huh. But it's always, you find those stories, you're like, that's me, you know, I'm the Frodo or the Sam or the Harry Potter or the, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the Hermione. Or you find those characters like, oh, that's, I get that person, that whatever that, the geek or the jock that misunderstood or fill in the blank. You know, a lot of teenagers watch those shows with the awkward teen that's secretly in love with someone like, oh, yeah, I get that. Mm-hmm. And I think there's something very reassuring to saying, seeing in a story, because in, sometimes in real life people are not honest with their struggles or their feelings. So you see in a story like, oh, real people actually feel that way. Someone wrote this character. Yeah. And hopefully you take that experience of encountering such a character in the story and then learning how the character moves on from there. Like, I mean... (laughs) You get stuck and that's not restorative. Right, right. I mean, to be fair, I've never really heard of anyone else referred to Neon Genesis Evangelion as restorative or redemptive. I don't know. I don't know if it was, but I just... It's an I example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That was like through episode four. After that, it just gets <laughs> dark as I'll get out, okay? But like, like those two episodes we like is all singy. Early yeah. stuff. Okay. Yeah, early that, stuff. That's fair. But yeah, as long as you're taking that and then seeing, okay, I can take this and progress from here or what's the, you know, how do you grow from that spot? Some of it's just a camaraderie. You're like, oh yeah, that veer, I'm that person. <laughs> you know, it's just sort of like, yeah, you're my people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. There's a healthy and an unhealthy way yeah. of this where where you like, oh, I know these people. I, I know these characters. I've watched this whole series with them. I, they're like best friends to me. Well, mm-hmm. okay, well, not quite. You don't know them. They're not actually real. And, you know, you can go into stalkerish behavior. Oh, there. Yeah, exactly. And that's, yeah. But there's a certain amount of that that like sometimes you just want to chill with your besties. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's related to chilling with people, or that's not the best transition. <laughs> but I think another restorative use of stories is to build empathy for people who are not like you. Mm. Because it's easy to do the story like, oh, I'm that guy. But stories also force you to understand people who are not like you. The best stories. And sometimes you're like, oh, that bad guy, I get why he does this. Or, oh, that weird guy, I get what's going on there. Or in the cross-cultural experience mm-hmm. where like, yeah. you you suddenly realize, oh, this culture that I have never had any attachments to, suddenly like, oh, they're he- real people. I can empathize with them even though they come from a completely different culture. And movies can do that, but I think books can do this very well. You, get, mm. you spend longer time deeper into cultures or inside thought processes that might not be your own. That's true, although I've also noticed that some of the same tendencies of I don't get this character or I, I get this character can apply. That's like, true. I remember debating with my sister Rachel about Katniss. Oh. Uh, she just thought Katniss was so wishy-washy. Like, why is she stringing these guys along? And I'm like, I don't think Katniss has a full understanding of what's going on in her self emotionally. Yeah. Like, she's not intending to do this. She's just, she's very emotionally stunted due to the years of living under an oppressive regime. Yeah. And I think, and we've been talking large about fictional stories, but also just stories of history. I mean, like, you read historical stories, it opens up your horizons of different times and places and things like that. So I think, you know, or historical fiction, but also just a good story. Like, when I read what's called Undaunted Courage about Lewis and Clark. You just get a whole different view of how the world worked and how people thought and stuff like that. It can be, it just broadens your horizons. And I guess less people start wondering: Are you guys straying from the topic? It's still restorative in the sense of again, this idea we know on one level that we should identify with people from other cultures. Yeah, but it's hard to really do that sometimes unless you're purposely in that world. You know, step into that world through a story somehow. And in that sense, it's again, it's restoring something that you believe on one like intellectual mm-hmm. level, but maybe not really had let it bloom in your heart. That yeah. sounds really <laughs> wild. <Yeah. proof. laughs> Very harmful, <laughs> heart marky. <laughs> but it's a different type of restorative. And I suppose, you know, if we got super like broad and restorative is that if the goal of being a human is to be fully human, mm-hmm. stories are a really good way to help that to say, Hey, we all get into our little ruts, our little, like, 
pet projects are a little like, this is how the world should work, and why does everyone bow to my whims? Yeah. We fall into ruts, or yeah. kind of like... I, or we get blinders on. Yeah. And it makes us, a, in some ways, a little bit more machine-like. You know, we, yeah. we have our, our ways of doing things, and this is the way we want to live. And then some, but sometimes stories can pull us out of that into someone else's experience. And then suddenly... The world is not just, we're not the only character in, this, in the story of the world. Yeah, right. You know? Right. Suddenly like, oh, these we're, we're meant to be involved in other people's lives and not just in our own. And stories force us to do that because it's not about us. Yeah. None of the stories about us. Yeah. At least when you watch a movie, TV show, we have connections, but it's always about those people. Yeah. We're rooting for other people. That's we're true. worried about other people or fake people. Yeah. But, and, and sometimes they're real people. I mean, documentaries, real life stories, well, they are stories. Yeah. And sometimes those speak to people in a different way than a fictional story would. True. Yeah. I mean, what does it say in Revelation about they overcame by the word of the Lamb and the word of their testimony or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Like the testimony, someone's personal story is powerful, especially when it comes to they're a person's relationship with Jesus and they're like, no, this is how this changed me or this is how I can live through this grief when I have Jesus on our, yeah. on my side. That's a powerful thing. That's a story. That's a that's an actual demonstration of this is not just theory. This is legitimate cause and effect. And, and it gets restorative wise. It restores your hope that there's change, that what you're doing now is not the only, like there's, there's hope for growth and everything. We saw, oh, it happened to that person. Yeah. It can happen to me. Yeah. I mean, that's why one reason why addicts really cling to having a community of like, yeah, I, I was addicted to this, but I've, I've overcome it and mm -hmm. you can too. I guess one last one I have written down and I like the fact they brought up, we can become very machine-like. And so this one's a little different that I know if I'm in a busy week, I can do like, okay, get up, I do this, I grade the homework, I teach the classes, I do the after school stuff, I come home, I fold the clothes, I, you're in get it done mode. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? And then sometimes you sit down and watch a really good movie or sit down and read a good book, your brain, at least my brain, pulls out of that list machine mode mm -hmm. into a different, it's just a different way of processing the world. And I have found at least notice myself sometimes sitting down purposely and reading so I'm like, okay, the entire way I'm interacting with the world changes because then it's living, then you're in the process of being in a story versus getting stuff done. Yeah. Well, then we we talk about that John Cleese conversation about that in, uh, I think it was a, a, a comedy one or creativity. It was about, it was some sort of, yeah, bulk up your creativity. Yeah. It was a February episode at some point where... There's this different two different mindsets between work and play, mm -hmm. and sometimes indulging in fiction or in reading and taking things in is a play mode where you're you focus. I mean, ideally, sometimes sometimes a reading can get into a work mode. It's like get through this, this yeah, novel, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> examine it, study the Shakespeare. But if you allow your mind to play, it has this recreation atmosphere of mm -hmm. like we are creating with the person who's telling the story, letting it, taking our mind on a journey. And, you know, entertainment in general is yes. meant to be kind of help you calm down, relax, and... And, again, be more human. Yeah, yeah. Hey, humans, be human. <laughs> I feel like that would be a good motto for the world. I guess so. Yes. Anyways, those, that's kind of my list, Tim. Is there anything I forgot that you would like to mention? I know we talked before we started recording. Another reason why stories are so restorative in some ways is that we are living in a story ourselves. Yes, that there is a beginning, middle, and there is a, there's a, yeah, we are in a story. And that's, I think, one reason why stories are, why we do this podcast, is that stories are just important. They're part of how we process so much of the world. Our whole understanding, from a Christian perspective, yeah. of God created the world, he sent a son into the world. Again, the, the three uh, mysteries of faith, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Mm -hmm. It's all past, present, and future. And it's a narrative, and the whole gospel is a narrative, a story, a restorative story. I think it's just one of the one of those ways our brains wired to make sense of the world is in story because uh, it's kind of reality. Yeah, I feel like this is a topic we've we've talked about in various different forms, different angles of attack because it's just that important. And and it's it's kind of underlies so much of what how we process on this podcast, so much of the entertainment that we talk about. Yeah. So I guess that's that's a good ending for story school, Tim. So sounds good. Let's go ahead into soundtrack. Alright, 
For soundtrack today, I picked a remix from the game Celeste. Celeste is a great hardcore platformer, but it has this theme of this, the main character is like struggling with anxiety, which is really interesting. I mean, the game itself, like you're going to die a million times. So like, it, it's like, it's okay if you mess up, you're going to have to. So it kind of <laughs> plays with the idea of anxiety. But I know of, I've read many people who've been really encouraged by the storyline. They have kind of have found connection with it. And her her battling through her anxiety and getting past it in the story. Anyway, so this is um, a remix called Courage in the Dark, um, remixed by Rebecca E. Tripp. It has sort of a mysterious, wintry vibe to it. Hope you enjoy. Well, welcome back. Hello. So that was a nice chill song there, yes. Nick. And so let's go ahead to the last um, Once Upon a Scene for the year. Welcome, everyone. Uh, last episode, we played 
Well, actually, before we get oh, to the last yeah. episode, Nick, I need to name drop. We had a correct entry from two episodes ago. Okay. Unfortunately, it came in after we had already, already recorded the last episode. But when we did a Dark Crystal clip, your brother, Zach, tweeted out at us on Drill Trains of He Thought. does enjoy Dark Crystal. So, yeah, he recognized that one. So, kudos to you, Zach. Good job. But, yes, last episode, we heard this clip. Offhand, I can deduce very little. Only that the words are written with a broad pointed quill pen, which is spattered twice. That the paper is of native Mongolian manufacture, no watermark, and has been gummed, if I'm not very much in error, by a bat who has been drinking rodent's delight. A cheap brand is sold only in the serious pubs. Oh, amazing. And we had several good entries for this one, correct? Well, at least two that I can okay. think of. <laughs> I know our listener, Nate's Chin, a former guest on the show. He did message me through Facebook and guessed correctly that this clip was from The Great Mouse Detective. And I should say that my wife, Janelle, also recognized it. Very so, nice. Good job. You all know your Disney movies. So, Tim, for this last one, we're going to do something from the movie The Stranger, right? Yes, of course. Okay, good. So that's our, we have to. Has there ever actually been an adaptation of The Stranger that... I hope not. <laughs> Only, Probably not uh, as a movie. Maybe there's an audio book out on, there. Come on, Muppets, The Stranger. <laughs> Starring Gonzo. Starring Gonzo, yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> Very existential Gonzo. <laughs> oh, goodness. No. Okay, here is our actual scene for you today. Incidentally, I know how you feel about all this Christmas business. Getting depressed and all that. It happens to me every year. I never get what I really want. I always get a lot of stupid toys or a bicycle or clothes or something like that. What is it you want? Real estate. Yeah, clearly the stranger. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so that is Once Upon a Scene. If you know it, please, uh, you can email us at derailedtrains at gmail.com. Or send us the notes on X or Twitter, as it's more commonly known. Message us on Facebook. Yeah, get a hold we'll of us. Of you know how. And we will give you some name recognition. Of course, if you don't want people to know your name, well, then use a pseudonym. Yes. Uh, or a code name or a superhero name. A Camus. <laughs> um, there you go. There you go. Anyways, uh, let's go on to... What if... So we thought we'd end the year with our one of our favorite segments, which is just what if. We're we going to be uh, creative and ridiculous. And just say, well, what if? What if? What if? What if? So today, since we're talking about the restorative power of stories, we are going to prescribe stories for certain ailments, diseases, whatever. You have a condition, a very specific condition. We've come up with a couple here. Uh, we will try to prescribe a story that will be the best fit for we'll that. We'll solve you, apparently. Yeah, I'll cure you. Yes. We don't need any medical expertise. We could just... Just give you a story to either watch story. or read. Yes, exactly. All right. So we tried to order, organize these, throw them at each other from serious to less serious. Yes. So I think mine might wind up getting more ridiculous than not. But we'll, let's see let's, what you let's got. Let's go. Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah, I can right. go first. All right. Ebola. Ebola. You have Ebola. Okay. So a, a story for someone with Ebola. Let's so, so say. It's, yeah, very infectious. Not fun. What are the symptoms of Ebola? Like bedridden, I'm guessing. Yeah. Does it include bleeding? I don't know. Okay, let's go. Symptoms of Ebola. This is, this <laughs> is have, very, what, Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> we have to know how, how to best treat this. All right. Fever, ache and pain, weakness, sore throat, loss of appetite, abdominal pains, vomiting, unexplained hemorrhaging, bleeding, or bruising. Okay. There you go. Okay, so a story that's going to make someone feel better who's undergoing all that. Yes. For some reason, I feel like a story about a doctor or, or a nurse or someone who, who did a lot of good for someone. I don't know. I've not seen Patch Adams. Okay, something like Patch Adams. That, so might, that might humor, be Humor, nice. doctor. Yeah. Okay. So not outbreak. No, <laughs> no. Not, 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 not going along those lines. Contagion or that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. Something about a missionary, about making other people feel good. Okay. Um, maybe it's a wonderful life, you know, if you feel like you're on the you're brink on of the dying. Brink of <laughs> there you go. Okay, yeah. Like, okay, well, I'm dying, but it's going to be good. I, 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 I accomplished something good. I know I made a difference Unless in someone's they did life. It and they feel bad. <laughs> yeah, so some feel-good, like, lifetime achievement sort of movie like okay. that. 
That's what, that's, that's 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 a lost job. A lost job. Yeah. So what kind of story would you um, prescribe for that? I feel like we need an adventure story, a voyage. Like, oh, okay. So it's not the end, it's the beginning. I right? like that. I like that. What would be, a, um, we need something like Joe versus Volcano. No, I don't know. Uh, I just not where I thought you were going to go with No, that. I wasn't thinking I was going there. It just happened. Like, <laughs> no. Okay. Um. Okay, this is probably cliche, but I feel like I feel like a couple of Indiana Jones movies might do you really good. You know, he was a teacher, but it, really his job is not that. His job is going and having adventures, doing things. Sure. Being an adventure, escapism. I don't know. I'm not sure that's my best answer, but that's what I got right now. Sure, yeah. I was wondering if you were going to go along the lines of Indiana Jones or if it would be something more like, for some reason, Lost Kingdom came to my mind. Ooh, from... No, I'm thinking Lost Horizon. Oh no, that's what I meant. Lost Horizon. Horizon be Lost Horizon would be really good too. Yeah, it's it's in the world, but it's it's out. It's a little more mystical. Mm. Yeah, or Actually, I think that might be even a better one. But or yeah. something like like that, or Voyage of the Dawn Treader. The... I, yeah, I thought about that one, but I was like, oh, I use that for everything. So I was trying to. <laughs> so you went to Indiana Jones? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think Lost Horizon actually is the better answer. Lost Horizon, why I would prescribe. Okay, sounds yeah. good. All right, Tim. Double amputation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Double amputation. Yeah. Now, so both feet or both you arms? Choose. Whatever <laughs> works with your story. <laughs> um, full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, done. If, done. If, for anyone who doesn't know Full Metal Alchemist, <laughs> that's a manga slash anime about a pair of brothers who try to bring their mom back from the dead with horrendous results. And one of the brothers ends up with no body. And the other one loses an arm and a leg in the process. So- yeah. <laughs> I'll go with it. Okay. Hey, I mean, at the very least, it will make you feel cool about having an artificial whatever. That, yeah. That you're yeah. Gonna, and you're like, at least I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like it. All right. That was that was good. My next one is in a similar vein, but a little less extreme. Okay. I just said a broken foot. A broken foot. So you're going to be bedridden for a little while. Treasure Island. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sure. Why not? <laughs> okay, no. Um, I can come with that one, but we're in the mood of literal, literal, literalness. Yeah. Um, broken foot. I mean, see, this is look at okay, this bad. This is where your voyage dawn trailer, but you have those monopods that jump around <laughs> on one foot. <laughs> you just hop around. <laughs> <laughs> yep, one of those. That's it. Uh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right, Tim. Diabetes. <laughs> Wow, yeah, uh, you definitely went dark on these. Good grief. Don't God. say Charlie Chocolate Factory. Uh, no, I'm not going to say Elf either, get based on how much sugar. <laughs> no kidding. How much sugar he likes. Actually, something food-themed that's not sugar-based might okay. not, not be a bad idea. Chocolat. <laughs> no. Maybe, oh, um, Ratatouille. Ratatouille, okay. So you can uh, enjoy the savory foods. Yeah, so it's about the different flavors, not just... Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not like diabetes can't ever have sugary treats. No, but it's, it's not, different. It's different. Yeah, and it so, depends what type. I didn't say it's type one or two yeah, or anything. Yeah. But I yeah. mean, Ratatouille was definitely the first movie that made me kind of appreciate, oh, okay, I kind of get where they're going with this whole taste as an art thing. Okay, okay. It goes, so... I like it. That's what I'll, I'll Sounds say. Sounds good. Okay, my next one here, Nick. Yes. The hiccups. Hiccups. All right, um... Clue. Clue. Okay. Clue. I don't know. I just feel like laughter get rid of the hiccups. Okay. okay. That's, kind of my, that's my my medicine right there. Okay. Because you'll be so distracted by ridiculousness that you won't think about the hiccups. I don't know if that's good medicine, but. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Hey. Okay. We're, right. the, we're going with our, our gut level prescriptions All right. here. Pet allergies. Pet allergies. Hmm. Okay. So the question here is, do you go with something, some animal movie to replace all the pets that you can't actually have in your real life? So like you have a pet that doesn't have hair, I guess. Well, yeah. I mean, if you want to do that, you could do like Beverly Hills Chihuahua, I guess. No, that's true. Or Flipper. Is that, oh, <laughs> or Flipper. <laughs> Free Willy. <laughs> Free Willy. Um, or do you go something completely different? Yeah, something that doesn't make you think of the pets that you're missing. Yeah. I guess it depends on how much of an animal lover you are and how upset you are by your pet allergies. Like if you, your pet allergies have made you just like not want cats and dogs at all. <laughs> then I don't want Dalmatians. <laughs> <laughs> or just Cruella. Um, I don't, I'm kind of digging Flipper now. But 
I've never seen the movie, but I remember the TV show yeah. from back then being kind of kind of chill, always kind of it's like Lassie, but at the beach by the beach. Okay, Flipper. So yeah, yeah, why not Flipper? Because even if you're if you are an animal lover, you'll like it. If you're not an animal lover, but like at least you're in a cool exotic location. So, okay, okay, sure. Cool. I'll go. I'll go with Flipper now. Now that you mention it, so. all right. Okay. Yes, go for it. My next one. These next ones are not ailments per se, like physical, yeah. but they're just anyway. Yeah. Your problem here is you're all out of cookies. You're all out of cookies. And yes. you have to just have some sort of story to help you out. Yes, to help you cope with your lack of cookies. With, with your lack of cookies. Hackers. No, um <laughs> sorry, really not useful pun. <laughs> um I'm trying to see what angle I want to go with this. I don't think you want to watch a food one, but you just get more angry and hungry that you don't have cookies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you got to do something a little different. And maybe, maybe I haven't done many books. Maybe we need a book here. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It seems to just be mean with a man. Like Oliver Twist. <laughs> um, please, sir, I will some more. No, let's see. Depends, okay, it depends how much you need it, but somewhere between like Nim's Island and Robinson Crusoe. So it's all about the like, just get along with what you've got. Okay. okay. So it's just like, look, I'm here. And Nim's Island's like a little, have you ever seen that? It's a book and movie. It's basically like this girl stranded on an island. Okay. And, okay. So help, help you shed that entitled feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and especially with Robin's Crusoe, you're going to be like, and God's teaching me something through this. <laughs> okay. No, but something like that. Yeah. This sort of survival mode. Sure. Okay. I like that. Okay. Um, hair loss. Hair loss. Huh. Um,. So maybe not tangled. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with Patrick Stewart. <laughs> you could do that. But next thought I was in like lost because man, uh, like Locke embraces his uh, Mr. Clean look. Okay. okay. Like, you could be a pretty cool grizzled old guy without uh, having uh, hair. Is there a story somewhere where they start with hair and they shave it off and that's sort of their no, probably Viva Vendetta. Okay. I've not seen that. Oh, because she shaved her hair off. I mean, <laughs> I guess you could say, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy because you have Nebula in there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess whether you're female or male. Yeah, that's true. That, I guess that would make a difference. But I, most people associate hair loss with, I mean, I guess eh, if you're like going through chemotherapy or something. But honestly, probably people, that's a situation I think people want an escape for rather than. than pro yeah. Yeah. So it really depends on the circumstances. If, you, if you're a guy, I'd say something like. With a cool, bald guy. A pool, cool, bald, maybe Bruce Willis. Um, maybe maybe watch Babylon Five and watch Garibaldi. <laughs> Get become... shorter, shorter hair the whole time. Uh -huh. That's a long. That's like <laughs> take the prescription every day for the next hundred days. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's a more traumatic sort of thing, like you're going through cancer, then we'll say something that's life affirming, like maybe a nice family drama or something. Eh, no, not... I was about to say Steel Magnolias, but it's like eh, the, the women stick together. But I'm pretty sure there's a woman in there who dies of cancer. No, oh. so let's not do that. But something along that line, like a family sticking together sort of drama. I'm trying to think. You of took it. my hair loss and made it more serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to go that direction. Well, I had some some goofy ones in there too. Yeah. So I guess it depends on the circumstances of okay. the hair loss. All right. Sounds good. All right. So my next one here, you've got a annoying time traveling ancestor who won't leave you alone. Ooh, annoying time traveling ancestors won't leave you alone. Yeah. Milo Murphy. No. Um, <laughs> so we need something. See, that's a trick. How do you feel... I'm not sure you want more time tra traveling just gen uh, stories, story or uh, shenanigans, because then it just becomes like, oh, I can't do that. So we need something that makes you care about your ancestor, even though he's annoying. Okay. All right. So something like, ah, it's been forever since watch it. You ever seen Secondhand Lions? I have not, but I'm familiar. That's the one where the boy goes to stay with his godparents. Or, yeah, they're like, yeah, grandparents, grandparents, and they have all these crazy imaginative stories. Okay, so I don't know. I don't know if that's the right idea or not. Or I guess it, depending on where your ancestor comes from, you could pick some movie that's from his time period. That's true. Like that's if true. he's from the Civil War, you could watch Lincoln. They show up a lot. Do people know? Do people see him? I mean, are we like saying, "Hey, watch Harvey" and? Um, <laughs> And you feel like you can show that to your friends, but like, this is what's happening to me. You were discovering something interesting here. How how you tailor your prescription for story really does depend on some of the more the more specifics of these circumstances. That's true. Yeah. It's 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 good medicine. <laughs> I'm trying to think of really out of the way. So time traveling annoying ancestor. 
but that doesn't have time travel. I'm trying to think of sort of not time travel. Being like, oh, it's Doctor Who. It's Back to the Future. <laughs> um, Let, let's. Well, I'll pick a specific era. So since he's time traveling, let's say he's from some steampunk age. So you can e- either determine that to be Victorian or like early 1900s kind of thing. So you know, some vague symbols of science. Okay. So something from that one of those two periods. Okay, that help might help you narrow it down. I guess it's trying to figure out, okay, what the ailment is. Is annoyance really what we're trying to get rid of? Yes. Okay. So you don't want to be annoyed with him anymore. Mm-hmm. So I, I like your idea of picking a movie that's going to help you empathize with mm-hmm. the era he comes from. Okay. Steampunkish. I feel like you just need to watch any BBC Dickens. <laughs> He's talking Industrial Revolution ish era. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I don't know. Hard times. Go read Hard Times. <laughs> I guess you could also do maybe The Prestige. I actually thought of the prestige. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that one. Yeah, I mean, it definitely would. Again, it kind of brings that era to life again in yeah. some ways, and and again, it's also a little wonky. It is a little wonky. Yeah, it crossed my mind. So, okay, prestige. We'll do prestige. And maybe maybe your ancestors are real annoying because they're real egotistical. Okay. Like, yeah. Help you understand them, and yet at the same time, not excuse their bad behavior. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Throwing it. I like that. So what, what's our time? Do we... We got time to do... Uh, one or two more each? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Your ailment is mismatched socks. <laughs> okay. Mismatched socks. Okay. And apparently you can't just take them off. That is your only option. <laughs> Those are the you only socks I have. You either read a book, available. watch a movie, or change your socks. You will not change your socks. I feel like some Dr. Seuss would be a great <laughs> pick for that. Like, yeah. just embracing the weirdness and the... Unusual. Okay, with I like Doctor Seuss. Is good there. I'm not sure which one. I mean, I know there's Fox and Socks. Um, the the Thousand which... Fingers of Doctor. What? No. <laughs> Fox and Socks was like a tongue twisting kind of book. Yeah, but something okay. like that, or maybe the Five Hundred Hats of Bartholomew Cummins. Mm, I don't know that one. That's pretty fun. Okay. So, or the Mystery of Ublick. Anyway, Ublick. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I'll come up with another ailment for you. Um, your internet is down. Your internet is down. Yes. Oh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're in an isolated underground bunker? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're like, at least it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> or that's your sort of, um. you're really trying to teach them, like, guys, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> your lesser one might be something along the lines of, oh, I'll go with this, Dandelion Wine. Go enjoy your small town. Oh, okay. Go enjoy every last moment in real life. That's a, a Ray book. Ray Bradbury. Basically, it's a book, short story collection. It's kind of both. Oh, okay. I mean, they're short stories, but they all are in the same town. They kind of right. build on each other. All right. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I like those. All right. All right. You got another one for me? Sure. I'll come up with one. We'll just do bad back. Oh, bad back. Yep. Back pain. Back pain. Okay. You slept wrong. What? You slept wrong. Not, not, not like medical, just like. Slept wrong. Ooh, this cuts a little close to home because I, <laughs> I had some of this around so, Christmas last so year. So, well, yeah. So, what would you prescribe yourself? Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. The Chosen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did he heal you? <laughs> <laughs> Thought of healing, or at least. Did you, have you seen season three yet? No, the, no. They do some interesting exploration because I'm pretty sure it was in this last season. One of the actual actors who plays one of the disciples, I don't remember which one yeah. now actually in real life has a bit of a, a limp. Okay. And so they explore that in like, what if one of Jesus' disciples, you know, one of yeah. the, who was going around seeing healings all this time, what if Jesus wouldn't heal him for, okay. some, for some reason? And how would they deal with that? I mean, The Chosen is interesting in that it, the longer it goes, it, it does a little bit more of sort of these what if sort of situations yeah. with Jesus and the disciples. Yeah. And as long as you're okay with that sort of thing, it's it's very interesting. It's very interesting, and it and it is also in in that way kind of exploring again. Christ will come again. Christ is here with us at the yeah. same time, sort of thing. How do we deal with that? And every now and then, you'd be like, yeah, this is sort of a thing we deal with, but would they deal with it? But Jesus is kind of with us in a way. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess that's. I like that. I like that. You know, I'll go with that. A probably more serious answer than you're expecting, but that worked. All right, one more here for you. Let's say. So you weren't gonna say. Um, Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> no, that was not in my mind. <laughs> it's a bane of your existence. Sorry. <laughs> Boo. Boo. <laughs> okay, since we, we kind of veered back into physical ailments, yeah. let's say migraine. Ooh, migraine. All right, so we need something 
not Michael Bay. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, okay. Probably not something psychedelic. Again, we were use it. If you're gonna do visual, I think something along the lines of like neighbor Totoro, something very calm, soothing. Sure. But book wise, again, if you can focus, I again migraine, maybe you can't focus or read. Mm. Depending on how bad they are. Yeah. But maybe some sort of like very pastoral, like Anna Green Gables sort of okay. thing. Okay. I can see that. Something very calming. Maybe an audiobook version of that. Yeah, would work. I was going to say audio would might. Yeah, that might be I the, think audio version might be really nice. Mm-hmm. That's kind of distraction. Yeah, kind of. Kind of this calming. is it's kind of interesting. Like this kind of works. Like I feel like I should start prescribing stories to people. <laughs> All right, let's do one hey, more. Hey, Doctor Nick. Okay, um, <laughs> one more quick pair. Cause, quick pair. Okay, because we can. I can cut out some of this pausing and introspection. Introspection. Dyslexia. <laughs> Dyslexia. Um. You can't solve it with a story, obviously, but... Yes. That sense that you don't <laughs> so means, quite make sense of things. So maybe not a book is what you're saying. <laughs> probably not a book. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably mean, but my mind went directly to this and I doesn't want to jump from it. Memento. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Memento, if you don't know, is about is a story about a guy who... Uh, well, it's told out of order, told backwards. Told backwards. About a guy who has... Uh, Short-term memory loss, um, yep. or long well, how it works. Yeah. Lots of memory problems, basically. Okay, so so you're trying, trying to piece like, together. Trying to make him feel better by saying at least. Um, well, you you get your letters mixed up. Therefore, your mind must work like this. <laughs> no, it's probably not. It's probably not. Uh, good, I apologize to all our view our viewers. Wow, our listeners have dyslexia. Probably not actually a good prescriptive. All right, um, we'll, we'll just leave it there, though. I think it's great. <laughs> And this is not an easy one. We can't, it's just it's just how a brain works. It's not like you're going to change it with a story. But yeah, that's true. I mean, maybe a better answer would be something like a beautiful mind. Uh, that cross, you know, just like hey, people think different, things work different. It's okay. They, they're able to work through their issues. Yeah, it's probably a more hopeful version of that story than Memento is. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, Tim. Okay, hit me with your last one. Okay, um, pantophobia. Pan- There's a fear of everything. Yes. All right. Um, Final Destination. No. <laughs> <laughs> these are like, some of these are like anti-prescriptions. This is an anti-prescription. <laughs> How to make your ailment worse. <laughs> if you don't know, Final Destination, I've never seen it. It's a horror film where like, they know they're going to die, just everything's trying to kill them. <laughs> yeah. So, Pentophobia, Fear of Everything. What kind of book will make you feel better about the fear of everything? Which, for the record, I haven't seen that movie either, but... I haven't seen Yeah. It's one of those things, you, you've heard the premise. Yeah, you've heard the premise. It sticks with you. I feel like there's a really good answer to this that I need to think of. I mean, I guess this could apply... Pentophobia is a pretty extreme version of this, but people with just anxiety. I think the kid's book, I Love You to the Moon and Back. Okay. Just It'll just reassure you that, like, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm not familiar with that one, but I can. It's just the bunnies. like, I love you to the moon and back. It's like the last one. I don't know what it's actually called. Okay. I don't know. That I Maybe. I mean, but there's, there's probably a longer book, but that just made me think. This is what it made me think of. Hey, you know, sometimes that um, a children's program can affect that, like, deep inner psyche of ourselves mm-hmm. in some mm-hmm. ways. I mean, that's one reason why people still... Love reading, rewatching clips from Mister Rogers. Yep, or some so, of those, yeah, just those calming influence. Yeah, it's just a book we had with the kids, and it's a fun one. And we, you know, so oh, well, we'll use that. Why not? Okay, all that right, sounds good. All well, right, well, that was fun. Yeah, you know, I think that was a good what if. I like that. Yes, I hope you folks enjoyed some of those recommendations. And please bear in mind, none of this qualifies as medical advice. Yeah, make sure you get a second opinion. Yes, indeed. We only play doctors on podcasts, <laughs> not in real life. Not in real life. Okay. Anyways, Tim, that's our episode. Um, oh, I think the husband's home. Oh, how nice. Oh, he has a Christmas present, too. This is going to be so wonderful. Yes. It will just kind of fade into the background here, yeah. and we'll, we'll watch this play out. And I'm sure I'm sure this will be charming. And, yeah, maybe we really should get out of here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Tim. Well, before we get out, um, how can they contact us if they would like? You can leave us a comment at our website, therealtrainsofthought.com. There's a comment page for every episode. 
We have very few comments on our website, though. So it's true. I would love to see some more people engage with us there. You know, break out of your shells of social media. Actually, go to an actual website. A what? Wait, a website? A website. It's a website. <laughs> um, yes. Again, deroldtrainsofthoughts.com. You can find all of our episodes there for this podcast, Dear Old Trains of Thought, as well as our other podcasts, including Let's Finally Watch This. Um, other places you can find us, you can if you must contact us through x aka twitter you can also find us on facebook we're there too like it or not <laughs> and tim um sign us off it's your soundtrack to end us here sure my soundtrack today is largely based off the title it is called all i want for christmas is grandma's sweet elixir soup which hey if, you know, if you're looking for rest- restorative there, powers there we go elixir soup sounds pretty good this is remixed from the legend of zelda the wind waker it is done by a guy called ridiculously garrett <laughs> which <laughs> he's is not just garrett not just garrett he's ridiculously Ridiculous. garrett okay you know, from overclock remix so i hope you enjoy all i want for christmas is grandma's sweet elixir soup and until next time, I guess, Nick, it's off to celebrate our own Christmases. Yes, exactly. So Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. And Merry Christmas to all of you listening. And you have a happy new year. Yep. Until next time, this is Tim. This is Nick. Adios. Bye-bye.